big one. Uh, so while I was studying uh, mathematics of the uh, Göttingen people at NYU at the Courant Institute, I also became very interested in how we think mathematics, how one does, how does one solve problems in the mind-brain. And I then encountered the work of Jean Piaget of Geneva, and in it he dealt with the growth of logical thinking in children and adolescents. That's the approximate title of one of his great books. And I then tried to link those together with the, all the mathematics I was then learning, with the psychology, which I then began to study as well. And I developed ideas for applying as mathematical models to study Piaget's cognitive theory. I developed some uh, lattice theory, elementary group theory, and I did ap uh, applications of them, that is, uh, mathematical uh, approaches to studying cognitive systems. And my doctoral thesis was that the mathematical structures of Piaget's cognitive theory. And uh, I then amplified that in things like the persistence of error, which is, uh, which, uh, is a collection of essays in what I call developmental epistemology. Today, we now see, given all the insight, the vision we now have in the brain, that the old epistemology, even Piaget's, he did not get into the picture of the brain because it's only the last 30 years after he was gone, in effect, that we now can see how the neurophysiology of the brain works, and we can now connect what we know, what Piaget was thinking of, Piaget's Gedanken experiments, but he could not easily get empirical validation in the brain. There was no getting in there, but now we can get empirical validation, and this is some of the research I'm engaged in. And so I now, in this, have several essays on how epistemology is really a developmental discipline. Philosophy, to be valid today, particularly epistemology, must now become naturalized in science. It must be a scientific epistemology, otherwise, it is losing the new knowledge that we can gain. And so I have a number of essays in there, and I have some of my mathematical models. And in my other book, oh here, Knowing and Erring, I deliberately use the ING, knowing, as a developmental thing. You know developmentally. You not, don't just know, I know. Fixed knowledge. Knowledge is in a developmental form. Okay, and in this book, uh, the developmental character of knowing and erring, where I show how the, uh, the basis of knowledge, which stems partially from Piaget's work, but I think I built on top of that further, is based in the idea of metaphor and error. We form metaphors, and today we now have begun to know where metaphors begin to form and mathematics starts to get done. Some of Polya's work is now becoming to fruition. He has some great ideas, like as in Piaget, but that was before today. Today we can do revolutionary things, but an important part of this is we don't only, only form meta metaphors, we also make errors and we follow through in erring. That is how we come back to metaphorizing. That is, there's a great dialectic going on between metaphorizing and erring, knowing and erring. And uh, so some of that stems out of the 
original research I did on Piaget and some I now do here. And I've given some papers and as well I give uh, talks. I, if I'm lucky, and this is something pointed to you, I'm in a, a rather uplifted age category now. And in that kind of category, you tend to be moved out of the loop, so to speak. And it, people do not easily read and deal with my work, which I think is formidable, but how do you prove it to somebody who will not look at it? Recently, Notre Dame University opened a new institute for advanced study. You may remember this one in Princeton mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. Einstein and Gödel and others were. And it is new, and since it was new, two years old, they said they are interested in the uh, interdisciplinary studies of all that we know. When I heard of that, I said, my very words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I wrote to them, and then I called the director, and I said, you know, I am well outside the loop of the students that, and the professors that will be coming to your institute, but I think I know a great deal that we can all profit from, mm -hmm. I from them and them from me. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be interested in applying. And when I told him what I had been doing, he said, by all means, apply. Of course, that doesn't mean I'm accepted yet. So I got a few people who know of my work to write references. And I drew up, I think I'll publish the, uh, a tremendous prospectus as to what I have been doing over the past 40, 50 years which is another formidable enterprise. Mm -hmm. And they now are deliberating on whether they will accept me or not. And I try not to say, I'm not going to be too disappointed if I'm not in there, but I will. We will see what comes of it. So this is where we stand now.